In Nevada, I have a little black whiteboard that I can write on any color of uh, erasable pens on it, red, blue, black, whatever. Here I don't have that, uh, even though maybe one of these days I will try to do something with it. I have been teaching uh, several series of messages. One of them is all the presidents and how they affected the world in America. And I've done 16 so far, almost 16, because uh, I have to go finish Abraham Lincoln a little bit more. And then we've been doing the book of Philippians and then hermeneutics, biblical hermeneutics, and then all the prayers, of the, all the, actually all the dreams and uh, visions in the Bible, which I've done probably 20 of those, I think, that are just beyond, just beautiful. I've been going back and studying that. And we're thankful that Sharon, you came up and spent five days with us and we had a little mini seminar. And I'm working with a seminary, online seminary now. They're working with my work to put it out there. They're doing all kinds of fantastic and amazing things with it. Uh, Brother John Gage is the head of that, or one of the heads of it. And I need to talk to them. And from doing the book of Philippians, I had done this before, but not in the depth that I wanted to do it. So I'm going to go back and redo the book of Philippians. And there is a little excerpt from this book that I want to bring your attention to today. Do you remember when they had Superman on television, you know, and up, up and away, you know? It was up, up and away. Well, that's kind of what it says in Greek here. In Philippians, the second chapter, starting with verse number six. Now, when we uh, look at this, there's a lot here about the complete ministry of Christ and beyond what many of the other writers say about him completely. There's something here that just goes beyond what anybody said, and uh, it's called Beyond Glory, Beyond Glory. Now, in John 1 and 1, You've heard me repeat that uh, 1,000 times at least. In beginning, kept on being the Word, and the Word there is Jehovah. And Jehovah kept on being proston theon. He kept on being an inseparable part of the Godhead. Because Jesus was really man, and he was really God. He was real man, he was really God. And he kept on being toward God, an inseparable part of the Godhead, and then the last, ver the last sentence in that verse, John 1 and 1 says, because the word or the God kept on being the word, or the word kept on being God, or the God kept on being the word. That's what we call a predicate nominative, isn't it? Everything on either side of that linking verb is the one and the same number, gender, and case, and person. So Jesus is God. He always was God. And he always will be God, except something happened when he came to this earth. Something beyond anything that what we had, if you looked at him in eternity past, you look at him in time, okay? And then look at him in future glory. Jesus Christ, in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead. In him dwelled the fullness of the Godhead. John 1, 14, as you girls can do, and probably all of you, Sakai Hologo Sarksagenito. And the word of the Jehovah kept, became flesh, and he dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Then John 1, 18 says, No man has seen God at any time, but the only begotten God, the one being in the bosom of the Father. In other words, he's there. The Father's in him, Okay. Jesus told his disciples, uh, they said, show us the Father. And he said, you don't know me? How long have I been with you and you can't see that I'm with you? And because he, the Father was in him. We have a triune God, a triune God. And Jesus Christ explained all of it. No one has seen God at any time, but the only begotten God, the one being in the bosom of God, he has led himself out, middle voice. 
it happened punctilio action, and he let himself out. And uh, Colossians, the first chapter, it says that everything that in heaven and earth was created by him, through him, and for him. Is that what it says? Everything, everything in Jesus Christ was created by him, through him, and for him. Let's go back and look at that for a moment before we go look at Colossians. I mean, back to Philippians. Because we're, if you read this verse, these verses in Philippians, you've got to understand all these others. I would have to have the smallest print Bible in the world. Well, not the smallest, but one of the smallest. Now, he is the exact likeness, and the... Uh, of the unseen God, in verse 15, okay. Colossians 1, 15. Okay. He is the exact likeness of the unseen God, the visible re representation of the invisible. He is the firstborn of all creation. Now, that is not what it says in, in Greek, is it? What does it say in Greek? Can any of you remember, Brother Ro uh, Roger? Or he is the head of all creation. He is not. He isn't the beginning. He isn't the firstborn. But he is the head of all creation. Randall, you got an A plus tonight already. Yeah, that's just because you wrote it down in your Bible. You were listening. He is the head of all the creation of God, not the firstborn, but the head of all the creation of God. For it was in Him that all things were created in heaven. And upon the earth, things seen, things seen and things unseen. Whether thrones, dominions, rulers, authorities, all things were created and exist through him, by him, by his service, by his essence, by his intervention, and is and is for him. And he himself existed before all things. In beginning kept on being the word. Before anything else came into existence way back in eternity past, he kept on existing. But I want to tell you something. Jesus Christ didn't exist in the glory that he has today. Bam. Explosion. Jesus Christ in eternity past did not exist in the glory that is in him and surrounding him today. And we'll look at that. And for him, and he himself existed before all things, and in him all things uh, consist and cohere and are held together. He also is the head of of his body, the church, seeing he is the beginning and the originator of all things, and he is the firstborn out of the dead ones, that's what makes him beyond glory. Beyond glory. The first ones out from among the dead ones, and so that he alone in everything and in every respect might occupy the chief place and stand first and be preeminent in all things. That's, this is him. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ gave his all. Now, the word Jesus means Jehovah saves, doesn't it? And the word word there, we know that in, in Revelation, the 19th chapter, and we're going to go over there in a little bit. Jesus Christ is the word of God. He is Hologos. He is Hathavar. He is Hashem. He is uh, the unspeakable name. He is Jehovah. And Jehovah means what? He who shall. shall become. And when he became flesh, he was about to have more glory than he ever had in eternity past. And we'll talk about that. I have a question. Yes. How does that match with Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and for He's always God. 
Oh, he's always God, but I mean, yeah. but he's more glorified there. He w when well, we're, you're getting ahead of me. Okay, okay. <laughs> right. I, I'm going there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going there. Okay. Jesus Christ, and in, in, in eternity past, had great glory, didn't he? And as he stood on the Mount of Transfiguration, he had great glory and showed all this manifest uh, great, what we might call the magnificent creating energy of God and light. And where does light shine best? In the dark. In the dark. Light shines best in the dark. You don't see the, if, if you could go down into a well or a mine in the ground, and look up, you could see uh, stars and things shining in the daytime because they're there. But because of the light, we don't see them. But in the darkness is where you see this light. Jesus said, I told, I am light that come into the world, but you lived in darkness. You did not want to see me. You want to, see, you want to live in darkness. But in the darkness is where we see the light the best. The contrast of God and the obedient son the obedience of Christ is what makes him so preeminent of all things. The Father only in the Son became flesh. The Holy Spirit only through the Son we have redemption. We have the redemption of all mankind, but what else? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world was already condemned, wasn't it? Already condemned. Verse number 19 says, For it has pleased the Father that all the divine fullness, the sum total of all the divine perfection and power and authority should dwell in him preeminently. What a story, huh? Beyond Glory. One of the Audie Murphy's first uh, movies that he did was in a movie, I believe it was called Beyond Glory. Beyond Glory. Now, if we go back <clears throat> to the book of Philippians. Hos Morphe Theo Hipparchon. Uk Arpak Mon. Hege Sato, To in a Isa, Theu. Who in a form? Who being in the form? This here is state, continue being in the form. Jesus Christ, when he came into the world, when, the, when Jehovah came into the world, John 1 and 1. In our K and Ho Logos. Kai ho logos proston theon. Kai ho logos ain proston theon. Jesus Christ kept on being inseparable because from God because he was God. But he became obedient. And through that obedience and through that tasting of us, our flesh, and our temptations and our weaknesses, he became even more glorious. In the form of God, it says, Hos Morphe, the one who, in the form of God, constantly being, existing. He never ceased being God. That word harparkon there is nominee, singular, masculine, present, participle, active. It's a continuous thing. <clears throat> he continued on existing, but he said he, he didn't feel it was robbery to be uh, deemed or calculated or considered to be Esau. Esau there means equal. Esau is like an equal sign. One equals one, one equals one, one equals one. Triune God. He was equal, he is equal with God, isn't he? And now we see that he is the above, beyond, up, up, and away, and beyond of all the understanding we have of God. Because we have an obedient God. We have a man that tasted flesh, that tasted uh, 
rejection. Now, <clears throat> there are many scriptures that teach that Jesus Christ is God, and he is divine. Acts 5 and 4, 13, 1 and 2, John 1 and 1, John 1, 14, John 1, 18, Daniel 7, 13, Acts 8 and 5, 1 Timothy 2, 5, Revelation 19, 11, onward, Revelation 22, 13, Isaiah 44 and verse 6, Hebrews 1, 5 through 8, Luke 4, 8 through 10, Mark 12, 35 through 37, Psalm 110, verse 1, Hebrews 1 and 10, Mark 7 and 7, John 8 and 58, Genesis 22 and verse 4, John 10 and 30, and John 20 and verse 28. That's some, not all. Jesus Christ is God. He always was God. 2 and verse 7 now. Allah. Allah. He outone. He Echinosin. Morphine. Dulu. Labone. In. Homeosmato. Mati, that is. Anthropone. Genomenos. Chi. Schemata. Eurethes. Hos. Anthropos. <clears throat> that little all of there, you can find that on page 15 in the analytical Greek lexicon. That's a strong adversative conjunction. Now over here it says that Jesus Christ is God. Isn't that not where we began? That he is God. Uh, that he's continually existed in the form of God. But now, strong adversity, he himself, he poured out. Third person singular, first heiress, indicative, active, he poured out. This word means to divert one's uh, properties, to divert the properties, to... Uh, Deprive something or someone of all kinds of power. Now, Napoleon Bonaparte, you know who that is. They finally deposed him and they put him, they exiled him to an island, but he never had the powers that he had before, did he? Nor did his heirs. Now, Jesus Christ's powers would increase. Jesus Christ's glory would increase. He wouldn't diminish. After his earthly ministry, it was greatly increased. But he himself, he poured out the form of a slave. He poured himself out of his divine glory into the form of a dulu, dulo there, of a slave, of a servant. Having, having received in himself... The likeness, homeo mate, the likeness of mankind. Jesus Christ took on a human body. God, from the Garden of Eden onward, planned for this, didn't he? The Bible says that in eternity past, he did what? He wrote our names down in the Lamb's Book of Life, but the only way we would get in the Lamb's Book of Life is by four because of this glorious one. This glorious one. The likeness of mankind having become. That comes from Genemai. That's a nominative singular masculine, second heiress participle middle voice. Again, he became for himself. And in a schemate. We got a word schematic from this word in Greek. Schematic means what? A pattern. A pattern. Uh, when you do a, uh, a patent, you write down a pattern, a schematic of what your patented device is. All right? Having become in a pattern... Having been found as a man, 
Jesus Christ emptied himself of complete what we might call divine powers. He emptied himself of divine powers. The Holy Spirit works through him from that time on. That's why he says, you will not, if you curse the Son of Man, but if you curse the miracles that I'm doing, you are committing the what? The unpardonable sin. Now, when Jesus Christ came into this world, it was God brought himself into the world. That's what John 1.14 says. Here we have woman. We have a woman. We have Isha. We have Mary. Mary was not divine, was she? Mary was a sinner, just like you and me, except the woman cannot pay, pass on the sin nature to the child, even though women, women are sinners, aren't they? Are women sinners? Just sin a little bit. Just a little bit? <laughs> Women are sinners. They, they definitely are. But they cannot pass the sin nature on, on to the child because if they could, we couldn't have a Savior. Now, the man is what passes the sin nature on to the child. And who passed the nature of Jesus into the womb of Mary? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Impregnated Mary in her womb, and her womb was a divine being, but that was human, and a schematic like God, and a schematic like human. He was found as mankind. He was complete deity, but he was also a complete man, but without our sinful nature that we carry with us. Verse number eight now, Eta pi nusen, he alton, genomenos, he pekus, makri, thanatu, thanatu de staro. And then it says here, he humbled himself. Now he humbled there is third person singular, first there is indicative active. But the next, the third personal pronoun here is a reflexive third person pronoun, he, he humbled himself, accused the singular masculine third person pronoun, reflexive. Having become for himself, look at that word, genomenos, having become for himself, nominative singular masculine, second aorist, participle, middle voice. Now, the Godhead put him in Mary, didn't it? But now, Jehovah in flesh is going to become obedient. And that's what's going to make him more glorious because he is obedient. The Father wasn't obedient, was he? The Holy Spirit wasn't obedient like this. But here now we have Jehovah God put in fragile human flesh. And even though he's in fragile human flesh, he didn't take the easy road, did he? He did not. He became obedient. Hippekus, that word obedient there, he became hippekus, makri thanatu thanatu. He became obedient all the way unto death, unto his death. Moreover, the death of the stake of the cross. Verse number nine now. Dio, kai, ho theos. He alton, he per reps usen, kai, he carisato, alto, to onama, to he per pan onama, onama, that is. Wherefore also the God, him, he greatly exalted. Look at that word, he per rexo o sen. He exalted up, up, and away, up, up, and beyond anything. That means above anything. He exalted him above all things. Also, he gave for himself to him the name, the one, he paid upon onama, exalted up and beyond all names. Even the Father, even the Holy Spirit. 
This is the most exalted name. The most exalted name. <coughs> Why? Because he procured our salvation. <coughs> Hina and to onomate. Esu, pon, goni, kamse, <coughs> uparan, neon, kai, hepi, geon, kai, kadox, thonion. In order that, in the authority and the name of him, every knee, every knee shall bow. Who, because of Jesus' humility, because of Jesus' obedience, you have salvation. It's nothing that you do in yourself. <coughs> we have salvation in us. Jesus Christ procured it, and the Holy Spirit dwells in us and eggs us on to do the right things. It spurs us on to do the right thing. That every knee of heavenly things, uparon neon, heavenly one, heavenly knees, every knee in heaven, and every earthly knee, all the atheists are going to bow to Jesus Christ one of these days. All of Muslims, all, all of the people in the world are going to bow. All, every Jew, every Jehovah's Witness that's actually anti-Jehovah's Witness, every Mormon, every Catholic, every Buddha or Buddhist is going to bow the knee to Jesus Christ on the earth. And the ones, <coughs> Kata, Kata, Toxthonion, and the ones down under the earth. Every inhabitant of hell, every inhabitant of the whole ten dimensions that's in the world, everything is going to bow to Jesus Christ because he shall be the extreme God focused worship because of what he did for us. In Revelation, the 19th chapter, to me, this is a absolutely God-exalting. Verse number 11. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, by the way. If I can read this thing. After that, I saw a throne opened up, and behold, a white horse appeared. There are going to be horses in heaven. And the one who's riding upon it is called faithful, true, worthy, loyal. Just what did we just say? Incorruptible, steady, steadfast, and true. And he passes judgment and wages war in righteousness, in holiness, in justice, and uprightness. His eyes are a blaze of fire. And his head, there are many kingly crowns and diadems. And he has a title, a name inscribed, which he alone knows or can understand. He is dressed in a robe dyed with dipping in blood. And the title by which he is called is the what? The Word of God, the Jehovah of God, the one who shall become, the one who became. And he said, And the troops of heaven are clothed in fine linen, dazzling and clean, and followed him in white, on white horses, more horses in heaven. And from his mouth comes out a sharp, double-edged sword which can smite and afflict the nations and he will shepherd and control them with a staff, a scepter, a rod of iron and he will tread out the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath and indignation of God the all mighty the all ruler the omnipotent Adonai Hara Anashi'im Adonai Ananashim. 
from Psalm 2 and verse 9. And on his garment and his robe, and on his thigh he has a name, a title inscribed, King of King and Lord of Lords, Adonai Ha'adonashim. Deuteronomy 10, 17 and Daniel 2 and 47. Jesus Christ is beyond glory. Jesus Christ, when he was raised from the dead, was beyond glory. Why did Jesus leave with greater glory than what he came with, or what he, or what he had before? How did Jesus, why did Jesus leave with greater glory than he existed in eternity past? Because, because of what he overcame. Because it was finished. Because he procured the payment of salvation. In every way and everything, he glorified God in his whole, in his birth, did he not? In his uh, youth and early life, we have that, where he was stayed behind, he was there in the temple area, uh, teaching the priest, is what he was doing, teaching them something, teaching them what the word of God meant. In his ministry, he was obedient, and he was full of glory, in his obedience and humility, his humility, and in his purpose and intent, Jesus Christ was born to die, wasn't he? God the Father wasn't born to die, the Holy Spirit wasn't born to die, but Jesus Christ and the person of Jesus Christ was born to die. But in that death, he would have more glory than he ever had before. In his death, he showed the humility and obedience and the glory of God and the glory of his creation, how the creation itself mourned at his death. And in his resurrection, in his resurrection, his glorified body was beyond what he was in existence before he became flesh. And in his ultimate glory... Jesus Christ is the most glorious one that every knee in heaven shall bow and upon the earth shall bow and in hell in eternity past and eternity future shall see the preeminence of the Son in causing all things to be brought back to God for God so loved the world the cosmos, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Our Father, we send this message out for your, the glory and the honor of your Son and you. Please use it to bring the world back to you and to let people know that how that every knee shall bow to your Son because of his obedience and his love and his power of the resurrection. In Jesus' name I pray.